सभी साधकों का सुबह के ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है चित्त सहस्त्र आर पे रख के सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं ध्यान की शुरुआत तीन महामंत्र तत्पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र से करते हैं
परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत होकर आप हमारे सहस्रार पर विराजी है श्री माता जी कृपा कर हमारा आत्म साक्षात्कार दृढ़ कीजिए श्री माता जी हम सब अपना अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत होकर आप हमें निर्विचारिता प्रदान कीजिए जय श्री माता जी इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में अमृतवाणी ग्रहण करते हैं टुडे इट्स अ ग्रेट डे दैट यू आर हियर टू वर्शिप योर गुरु इन द रेलम ऑफ द हार्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स if we can do that in our domain of the heart we don't have to do anything else <clears throat> today also i feel <clears throat> i have to tell you about sahaj yoga and its value which is related to other yogas which were accepted in the olden days all over the world they called it one as the yoga not sahaj yoga it started with various type types of practices of ashtanga yogas 
एट फोल्ड योगास विथ अ गुरु आई वन एड टू गो थ्रू लॉट्स ऑफ हार्डशिप्स नो बडी हू वॉज मैरिड वॉज अलाउड इन टू दैट अष्टांग योगा एंड दे हैड टू गिव अप देर फैमिलीज गिव अप देर रिलेशनशिप्स दे हैड टू बिकम एब्सल्यूटली जस्ट मिनट एब्सल्यूटली विदाउट एनी अटैचमेंट्स टू गो टू अ गुरु all the property all their possessions were given up not to the guru as is done in modern times but given away and this was called as yoga <coughs> the another style was called as sankhya sankhya is where <clears throat> all your life you have to gather things with detachment and then to distribute them completely and take to a guru in a way completely surrendered and then get realization sankhya is the right sided sorry sankhya was the left sided behavior and the yoga was the right sided where the gayatri mantra was used was the sankhya because they were left sided they used to use gayatri mantra they went so much to the left side that is to gather things to gather possessions to gather properties to gather all kinds of uh, uh friends and relations and societies that they were afraid that they may be completely lost into all those things they would go to gayatri the mantra of gayatri which teaches you the essences of all our chakras the centers i have told about this before also bhu bhur swaha who stands for the essence of the bija of the muladhara who for <coughs> the universe that is created that is swadishtana's bija swaha is the bija of the nabi mana is the essence of the heart chakra then jana is the people collectivity is the essence or the bija of the vishuddhi chakra then tapa is the tapa is the one where you go into tapasya into renunciation into hardships is the essence of the agya chakra and then the satya is the truth is the essence of the sastra not the truth that we think as truth but the truth that is expressed in our central nervous system so this is discovered at the seventh stage of the sastra so the people who did sankhya were sort of not so much 
respected as spiritual people because they thought these are all involved into worldly things and worldly possessions and worldly happenings. So, they were regarded as something secondary. Or those who were yogis of the gurus were regarded higher because they had already given up everything and they have gone to a guru giving up all the things that they have. But here is gurus had a problem within themselves because they found that those who came to them gave up everything, no doubt, but still there was lurking attachments. In their own ashramas they found these people had their own attachments to things. Though outwardly they had given up, but inside they had not given up. So they were still sticking on to these ideas that, uh, oh, it's all right, but still we can have little things like that, doesn't matter, like that. There was little compromises going on. Like as we have here nunneries and all that. So both in a way were artificial. The one side is the Sankhyas were trying to ascend with all the luggage they were carrying. And another were trying to descend with all the ambitions of ascent. So it was a very funny thing in every aspect in both these styles of yoga. As you can see that now if you go to America, you will find, oh God, what is this America? It is not democracy, it is democracy. But if you go from that, in the realm of another country like Russia, you will find, what is this? You are working here under complete pressures and fears. But as soon as a Russian comes out of that country, he beca can become worse than an American. So what is this? One theory works here, another theory works there. So which is the theory that is all right? Same you find about religion. Say, a religion which believes in many gods like the Hindus, they are also believing now into the Bhuts. And they are also following the path of possessions. If you go to a temple, every temple has got a nice uh, arrangement for you to get possessed. <laughs> or even a church or a mosque, where God has to decide, you find suddenly you get attacked and you come out absolutely puzzled about yourself, ending up into lunatic asylums. So what sort of worshipping places are these, where you go to find God and you get the horrible satanic forces acting on you? That's why in the modern times, People have become so very confused. We do not find truth in anything, in any ideologies, any philosophies, anything that started, say, Confucius started, humanism, Socrates started another thing, Muhammad Sahib started another thing, like Muhammad Sahib said, let us not worship God, as an idol. Let us worship Him in the Nirakara, in the formless God. But you see the formless, how they are killing each other now? I mean, after seeing the Muslim countries, you can't believe there could be any formless or formful God existing anywhere. All must have run away, the way they are fighting. 
Then you see the Christian countries. Wherever they have gone, they have tried to dominate other people who were not Christians. Just as if they had a right to do it because they were Christians. The disciples of Christ who said, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And I have to say the same for all the Christians. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And when you are shocked at all these things, one must sit down and think, what is to be done? What's the problem is? So it is neither Sankhya nor Yoga. Then what is it you have to achieve? That is Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is a system in which first you are not given a theory but the light in your hand to see for yourself, in which both things look the same. For example, now you have got this beautiful house made for your mother. While your mother doesn't know how to get attached to even a pin. <laughs> it's a funny situation. Everybody has to remind me, Mother, it is your house. Oh, I see. <laughs> and I am to be reminded, I must thank you all, especially the English, especially the leaders of English, uh, Sir Yogis, for making full effort to get this house. But then I think, why should I thank? It's not mine, it's theirs. And that's what it is. So a new type of confusion starts. <laughs> and that's what I felt, that this confusion is very sweet and beautiful. It's a fact. that nothing belongs to us, but everything belongs to us. When I think about how beautifully you have done this place, it belongs to me, all right. This house belongs to me, England belongs to me. <laughs> And above all, the whole world belongs to me. That's how we see Sankhya and Yoga become one in Sahaja Yoga. And he said that when you see Sankhya and Yoga as one, then only Sapashati. That's the one who sees, that's the one is the witness. So for normal people it could be that how is it your mother is supposed to be a guru? and she wears all ornaments. But what to do? She is also a mother and she is also a goddess. Another confusion. <laughs> How to make these two things be? You see, a guru has to be a very angry person, wearing only single dress, either upwards or downwards, I don't know how they are. with a big, thick rod in the hand, <laughs> never smiling, laughing, no question, smiling. 
And the gurus have to be very long-faced, <laughs> developing big, big beards. <laughs> and no ladies allowed. <laughs> In such a situation, where the women are not to be seen at all. I mean, I shouldn't see, even see my face, it's like that. <laughs> there is a big discussion in all the scriptures, are not scriptures, I would say, the critics, whether a woman should be allowed to do the spiritual practices or not. Imagine! Not only among Christians you will be surprised, even in Indian scriptures, whether is woman should be allowed or not to do spiritual practices. Now, when your mother is a woman and she is your guru, what will you do? <laughs> this is another confusion. Because it is wrong, the whole thing is falsehood, based on no basis at all. You may try anything to say that women are not meant for spiritual life. Try any argument, it fails. The other day I met one big John in a, a university, big fellow, I might say a really hard nut. <laughs> and uh, he started saying, we Christians cannot accept a woman to be God. I said, why? Because... <laughs> So, to put all these upside-down stories right, your mother had to come on this earth as a guru. I got to this point out of one little confusion I had about myself. The other day, somebody was after my life, that I should buy a bracelet. I said, I have no money anymore, I don't want to buy. All right, we'll give it in puja. I said, no, but there's only Guru puja. I said, all right, we'll give it in Guru puja. I said, on a Guru puja to buy a bracelet was something funny I've done. After all, in a Guru puja, don't give a bracelet to your Guru, do you? You can give, say, a big rod, or you might give him a sandalwood. Uh, Kharavas is called the chappals, or you may give him a shawl. But here it is, I have asked, or I give it in Guru Puja. What was the reason? And I became aware of my own confusion and I thought of it. I said, This is what it is, that it has to happen this way. That on a Guru Puja, you have to give a bracelet to your Guru. Let us change it over. The whole thing has to be brought up this way that everything faces reality. All these false ideas have to be given up. Like if you have a carpet upside down, the whole design is upside down. But if you put the carpet right, everything falls in line. And that's why you needed a mother to give you realization and a guru as a mother to teach you that for ascent of God, nobody can be prohibited. That is how the Sahaja Yoga today is working out 
in all directions if you find. To put all upside down things into right direction, to expose it to reality, to bring all real values, to abolish all rotten value systems, all political, economic systems, all spiritual theologies, all psychological and all such nonsensical ideas into its proper direction. How in one incarnation it has worked out? You can imagine how in one incarnation all these ideas have been put right. Another idea exists among Hindus that if you are a religious people, you should be a vegetarian. All the Brahmins believe this and even the non-Brahmins. But we had a Brahmin working in one of the places where I was living and they said that for mother we have to give meat. She doesn't eat anything else, she has to eat pure proteins. He said, yes, yes, of course, for mother she must have. Whether it's a Brahmin or a non-Brahmin, all understand that mother has to eat proteins. Because she has to drink the blood of all these Rakshasas. How can she be vegetarian? <laughs> and if she has to kill so many devils, how can she be non-violent? So the contrast that you see in the description of the mother, that she is the one who is the most furious personality, when it comes to the killing of the people who are of the negative land, who are trying to destroy her creation, her own children, and she is the sweetest and the mildest person for her own children. These two contrasts should be seen. Even in animals you'll find the same contrast. But very evident in an incarnation like this. And today, through Sahaja Yoga, we have been able to prove that Sankhya and Yoga are the same. Whether you collect things, whether you have possessions, or whether you give away, makes no difference to a person who is detached from the dead. If you collect them for others, even better. But if you collect for you, yourself and then give away, that's even much better. Because first you collect for yourself, then you think, oh, it's good for me, I will use this one for myself, it will be a good idea. So the self is there. But then that you give away, that means your detachment is complete. Or the third personality could be like we, we just goes on collecting and just goes on giving. Without thinking, it collects and without thinking, it gives. Because thinking is not my job. That is one thing I have given up, is to think. I don't want to think. That's your work, not me. And without thinking how many things we have achieved through Sahaja Yoga, Yoga and Sankhya both are products of thinking, not products of spontaneity. This house itself is a product of spontaneity. I mean, as we call the English as Saab Loks, you see. So I took some Saab Loks with me, wow, to see some houses. They wanted to house us with some character, means something must fall out, something must be crooked, it should not be straightforward. 
I said, now please, I can't bear all this crooked. So, no, no, but it has character. I said, now this kind of a crooked nose I don't want. Straightforward it should be. So they were rather disappointed at me. <coughs> and the Saab Lok has some other ideas also. That say, for example, if you go to, say, to a place called Vinmaya, it's a posh place. And if you go to the north side, it's a little less. Then if you go to the east, it's useless. Like that. I said, let's go to the north. Northest, as far as we can go. Because you know, the Goddess has to be Dakshinamurti. She has to be on the north side, to be on the, her eyes on the south. That's the reason she has to be... I mean, we could not be in Scotland, that would have been too much for you. But that would have been the ideal for all of us. Because then our drishti is towards... our vision is towards the south, and we see the whole universe under our own beautiful visions. So that's how spontaneously we found this place. And Saab Log were, yes, no, no, yes. But spontaneously we got. And then we found out it has a history. Then we found out its beautiful vibrations. Then we found out the potential about it. Whatever you get spontaneously, it is full of potentials. On this point, I have to say a few words. It's important. Can I have my handkerchief, please? I have to get few few points I have to say about. Thank you. About spontaneity part, which is quite interesting, the way people think spontaneity works. Like, it's mostly ego part which says this is spontaneous, with so many people. Especially the very old Sahaja Yogis think they are authorities on spontaneity. <laughs> like we had a land in Vaitarna. So one of the older ones went there and he said, this land is vibrating and this is not vibrating. So everybody accepted, all right, all right, all right. Then they said, in this part of the land, nobody should eat their food. Then from where does this knowledge come? I mean, eating food is not a sin, is it? As if it is a sin that you are eating food in there. Then, religiously, they follow A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, Z, and again A, B, C, D. Of Sahaja Yoga to such an extent, ki I start thinking, now they have become another fanatic Sahaja Yogis. Fanaticism is against Sahaja Yoga, absolutely. Now they'll ask, how many times we should say this mantra? Then I said zero times. <laughs> How many drops we should put the ghee in our nose? <laughs> then I say a full jug. There. Oh, I should not have gone from the left side, I went, I should have gone from the right side. Then I would say, you just jump up. <laughs> you have to be like children. But the ideas are so settled down in Sahaja Yoga now, it's so many years, of course, but they should not settle down. If they settle down, it's not Sahaja, it's not spontaneous. If you do this way, then it is wrong, that way it is wrong, nothing of the kind, nothing is wrong for you people. 
if you do anything wrong, your vibrations will be lost, finished. What is there to be so cautious? Like somebody said, I don't want to look at the cigarette. I said, why? Well, looking at it also is sinful. I said, looking at it, what happens? Then I feel like smoking. So I said, better smoke once for all. <laughs> or I cannot hold a wine bottle in my hand. Why? No, holding the wine bottle is sinful. I mean, you can swim in the wine. <laughs> so, this kind of understanding should be there. Though I have always said that if I say one thing, you will clinch on to it. So, I always say the other side of it. That don't stick on to something. Sahaja Yoga is not for sticking on to something. Like somebody who had learned certain, say, lessons about Sahaja Yoga in the beginning of it, certain mantras they had learned, and still they are sticking on to the same step. No, 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 no. You have to go ahead. This is just a staircase. Don't get stuck at a point. We have had so many such cases here. People get really outworn, as they say. They'll go on telling you so many nonsensical ideas. You see, if you do like this, then this happens. First of all, you don't give ideas to others. That's one thing if you decide that we don't give ideas about what's wrong with another person. Half of your job is done, because you don't have to do any job as I don't do. Anybody who comes, you are a bhut. You better have it. I get reports from others. They say that your Sahaja Yogis are wicked people. I said, why? Oh, they tell you you are evil. They tell you you are possessed. They tell you you are this, you are that. They are very wicked people. I'm really shocked to hear that Sahaja Yogis, how can they be wicked? If somebody is suffering from something in the phone, they say, Oh, you better have it. It's good for you. That's not the way. We have to be not only humble, very tactful and sweet to new people, if you want any more to come in. But if you have decided not to have any more, because we'll have to put another maki, <laughs> then I have nothing to say. But if you want others to come in, then it's important that you talk to them in a very sweet and beautiful language, the way they understand. Rudeness, arrogance, showing off is of no use. One should understand Sahaja Yoga is where you are in complete enjoyment about it. You are just lost into that enjoyment. Where is the time to remember how many times to give uh, bandhan to yourself? What is the need to give bandhan to yourself? It's all a joke now for you, should be. A little child sucks the milk from the bottle, all right, <coughs> because it has no teeth. <coughs> but what about you people having that kind of a thing? It's very childish <coughs> and shows no growth at all. Sahaja Yoga must grow with you. You should not be any more regarded as immature Sahaja Yogis. I would say a person who is a matured Sahaja Yogi is the one who can combine so many things together with all beautiful lines thin lines, thin maryadas maintained. But you cannot do the other way now. For example, if you say, all right, now I'll be sweet, and then I'll be angry, then I'll be like this, then I'll be like that, it will be a hodgepodge. 
It's a funny personality. You see, suddenly I get angry like that, and then I. People will think you are doing Bharat that Natyam or something like that, showing all your moods. In five minutes, you show ten moods. This is the growth within you which will show. So we have to have our growth, and for growth, let us be silent within. Let us not react to others. This person is like that. That person is like. What about yourself? Also, there are other ways. Like I tell somebody that you see, you have this problem. So that person immediately goes to the second person and says, "You see, mother told me that you to have this problem better look after." I didn't tell that person. I told you. Keep it to yourself. So mother says is to be given up. Absolutely. If mother has to say, she'll say it. Why should you communicate? Why should you say? I never asked you to say that. I. Understanding Sahaj Yoga is very simple, extremely simple. When you understand one thing, that you have to have your innocence intact. Now, how to get to innocence? People will say, "How to get to innocence? It's a vicious circle." So, how to get to innocence? It's a very vicious circle. We have to get to innocence through what? Your ego or super ego? How will you get to innocence? Mother says, "Don't raise your kundalini." I mean, I am sitting here. People are just doing like this. So what's happening? I am sitting here. Kundalini is up there on your head. <laughs> what are you raising? Now, how to manage is the problem. Very simple it is. In the beginning, I said. Let your guru reside in your heart. How to manage? Why? Let mother manage. Mother is managing me. Keep it at that. Your right side will clear. Your left side will clear when you say. Nobody can manage me, but mother can manage me. Two things together, things will work out. Thank God you have somebody like me to sitting here where you can say so. Think of those who never had anyone to tell them or to be in their presence to say that I can manage this or you can manage that. That's how you can balance. Allow your kundalini to grow. Everything works out. Like this house, when I purchased, or when they purchased, or who purchased. <laughs> so many questions and complications. How? 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 What's worked? Is there? Quite intact. Nothing has fallen off. Nothing has gone wrong. I had to shout once, all right. But let me shout. You don't start shouting. As soon as I finish, they'll take a loudspeaker, shout even louder. Mother says, "So you are this that." I am saying about you. Who are you preaching? But only you must know that when I tell you something, please do it. Please do it. See, because I know quite a lot. Because I am guru, your guru. Because I am the guru of all the gurus, and those who is a real guru knows that my mother knows everything. She is knowledge herself. If she says something, it means something. And even I may test you sometime. Doesn't matter. 
That's how you become the Guru. Shivaji had a Guru called Ram Dasa. In those days, Gurus used to take lot of test of their disciples. I never took your test or anything. But you are, you are testing yourself, that's all. And his Guru one day said that, uh, I think I need the milk of a tigress. I have to drink the milk of a tigress. <laughs> Half of them died. <laughs> and most of them didn't hear it. Shivaji said, all right, I'll get you. He went in the jungles. He saw a tigress and there were little, little, small little ch children she had. And those cubs were lying on the side. He went and he just said Namaskar to her. He said, My Guru wants your milk. That's all. Because Gurus are Parabrahma. Their orders are listened to by the Parabrahma. My Guru Sri Ramdasa wants your milk. So please, will you give me your milk? So nicely she got up, stood up before him, he milked her and took that milk for his Guru. This is what it is. Have you understood the meaning of Guru Pada? When you become absolutely one with the desires of your Guru, you achieve the position of a Guru. But if you still have certain ideas about it, then Sri Ramadasa, as I said, that then God, Alpadharishtapai, it sees your little courage. All right, go ahead, break your heads and then come back. I'll fix them up. So it is important that we should do one thing seriously, is to take your mother very seriously when it comes to some request. Of course, in English language I always say, please, will you do it? Or I may even say, I'm afraid, will you do it? But that should make no difference. Other day only when we are coming for Cardiff, I said that the first class will be coming on the other side. But everybody at the platform said, no, it's coming on the other side. I said, all right. We sat down and then they announced that the first class is coming on this side. So we all again walked back. It's all right for those people. What about you? Many a times you have seen, I'm at the asking of a Guru if something goes wrong also. It should be always accepted as the law of the Divine. Because Guru is the giver of the law of the Divine, not the worldly laws. The law of the Divine He gives you. And the law of the Divine you understand, then you have to surrender to that law of the Divine and that's how you'll become masters of that law. Today for a Guru Puja, I can go on talking to you, but today I would request you to understand that why surrendering as Islam is called was so important that if God is your Guru, let Him guide you. Thy will be done. Let us not guide ourselves. And also, sometimes they try to guide the Guru as well. Then the Guru plays tricks. And then you fall into the trap of tricks. And then you find it's too much. It's better to listen to what the Guru is telling you and better to do it 
whatever the guru says is all right gurus can ask you anything i mean i am quite a nice guru <laughs> like this ramadasa himself asked his disciples that i have got a very bad septic uh big boil and a uh, please try to suck it out because it's full of pus imagine so they didn't know what to do you know how to suck the pus of the guru is too much but shivaji came forward he took down his hat sat down next to him started sucking people said how is it it's very sweet very nice actually he had tied a mango there that is how the gurus took lot of tests i have never taken your test and you do not take the tests of others leave them to me i'll manage all of them one by one whatever has to happen happens in sa yoga to think that 100% will be rich wealthy healthy and on top of the world is a nonsense if you become very wealthy then there will be recession because others will be very poor if you become very healthy then nobody will come near us if we all look like wrestlers will come near us if you become very wise that people be frightened of such wise people nothing will they cannot understand anything it will go over their heads so let us be in the center we should be wealthy but not too much we should be healthy but not too much and we should be wise but not too much <laughs> so far so good that's how we should move so we keep to our maryadas and we become beautiful sajogis who will be congenial to others who will be able to get others to us who will be able to project an image of magnetic personalities and this is what we have to do if you try to show off in any way like i have seen people try to show off unnecessary there's no need just be in the background if you are very much in the background just be in the foreground try to balance yourself try to watch yourself and guide yourself and tell yourself become your own gurus judge yourself how far you are in the center how far you are growing how much growth have you achieved are you still attached to small things here and there are you still bothered about small things mother i should have got 80% marks i have got only 75% marks oh god because he got 75% marks there something good has to come out he has to learn a lesson maybe or maybe that he has to take some other course maybe something that is good for his ascent has to work out is to be seen if you have to be gurus if you can't see that how can others see that this is to be realized not to be put in the mind but to be realized in the heart in the realm of your heart you have to realize it you have to understand it in the realm of your heart nice that we are in england the heart of the universe that we are talking about opening our hearts 
if you have to put me there is the ocean of love and to contain this ocean of love you have to have a very very large heart bigger than your personalities bigger than your countries bigger than this world bigger than this universe may god bless you. जय श्री माता जी अपना चित्त सहस्रार पे रख के प्रार्थना अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आज का ध्यान हम सब आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आपने हमें आत्म साक्षात कर दिया परम चैतन्य से आशीर्वादित किया हमारा चित्त सहस्रार में स्थित किया इन सब के लिए हम हृदय से आपके ऋणी है आभारी है श्री माता जी आपकी कृपा में हम हमारा अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आप ही करता करविता और भोगता है हम तो केवल निमित्त मात्र है श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमारे अंदर आध्यात्मिक परिवर्तन घटित कीजिए हमें स्वयं की पहचान दीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें निर्विकल्प स्तुति प्रदान कीजिए हमारा उत्थान निर्विकल्प स्थिति में कीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें विश्व निर्मल धर्म में प्रस्तापित कीजिए श्री माता जी हमारे सारे प्रार्थनाओं को स्वीकार कीजिए और हमें आशीर्वादित करने की कृपा कीजिए परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके श्री चरणों पर हमारा कोटि कोटि नमन कोटि कोटि नमन अनंत कोटि नमन जय श्री माता जी सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं
आज का ध्यान सत्र यहीं पे संपन्न होता है जय श्री माता जी